This is Cliff Onan, your narrator, inviting you. We welcome it as a source of enjoyment for motorcyclists everywhere and as a permanent record of an outstanding sporting classic made truly great by a community spirit of wholehearted cooperation. With this thought in mind, we express our gratitude to the Avalon Chamber of Commerce, the Santa Catalina Island Company, the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, the Avalon Police Department, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office, the Sports Committee of Southern California Motorcycle Clubs, participants and spectators. Everyone has been wonderful. To return briefly to our hosts, Johnson Motors, their pioneering in the importation of British motorcycles has made a valuable contribution to the sport in the United States. Looking in on the shops at Johnson Motors, we find Walt Fulton, number 103, the defending Catalina champion, and Jimmy Phillips, holder of both national TT championships, putting the finishing touches on their Catalina mounts. These experienced riders take no chances. They know that neglect in sitting a nut or securing a locking device could just as effectively ruin their chances of victory as a fall on a turn. Cal McCalla, Johnson shop foreman, co-tuner of the record-breaking Bonneville Triumph, lends his skilled hand in preparing a third Catalina mount. Here is the picturesque village of Avalon, nestled in a semi-tropical splendor in a cove of Santa Catalina Island. Through the years, visitors have flocked from all quarters of the globe to enjoy its superb climate, fine beaches, and thrilling deep sea fishing. Now as we gaze over the tranquil village, it is hard to realize that in a matter of hours, it will awaken to find its sidewalks teeming with thrilling thousands and its streets being scorched by bellowing racing motors. At the far side of the harbor, we view the famed Avalon Casino, a beautiful example of old world architecture. It was built at an extravagant cost by the late William Wrigley, Jr. Among its features is one of the world's finest ballrooms. This luxurious floor will be open to all motorcyclists for an evening of dancing following the Saturday's contest. But look, here comes the good ship Catalina with its vanguard of happy holiday crowd. Let us board our flying saucer and contact the ship while still at sea. We'll break in on the, on the captain and his quadrant of officers. Also break in on Bill Johnson, no doubt explaining to Walt Fulton and his charming wife that the flying fish that frolic in the waters have a variable pitch propeller on their tails. The defending champion's thoughts are more likely devoted to plans for retaining the Cycle Magazine Perpetual Trophy. Bill Johnson wishes him every success in the tremendous task ahead. Zip, and we're back ashore again to watch the graceful approach of the big ship. The ocean trip to Catalina is a source of endless fun for everyone and for the many experiencing their first trip on the open sea, it is an unforgettable thrill. Would you look at the tremendous crowds on every deck and everyone trying for a spot on the rail to watch and marvel at the great skill and precision with which the huge boat is docked. Look up there on the funnel deck. Don Ricardo and his band contribute to the festivities with the familiar strains of Avalon. At last, the gangplank is down, and here comes the crowd, and what a crowd. If you want to know the capacity of the ship, just count them. And don't forget to yell, hi there, to your friends. Leonard Andrews, San Diego Harley-Davidson dealer and his group, break out New Jersey just for the occasion. Bill Johnson stops for a few happy words with Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy Phillips. And here is the proverbial rose between two thorns. Attractive Mrs. Pete Coleman with those friendly San Francisco competitors, Dud Perkins, the right, and Hap Jones. Pete Coleman breaks in with an unhand that gal, you villains. Oliver Billingsley, publisher of Moto, arrives with his right-hand man, editor Bill Bagnall.
Bill Martin, owner of Cycle Center in Burbank, greets the cameraman. Chuck White, parts manager for Ed Kretz, adds his howdy. There in the slouch hat is Chuck Baskerville, editor of The Motorcyclist. Jovial Ray Bowles of Cycle Magazine smiles to the lens. And here's that fiery flying Frenchman, Lamy Lamoureux. And his partner on Speedway fame, Jack Mound. And here's another noted Southern California racer, Ed Hinkle. The man sporting the white head of hair is Bob Walker, long noted in Southern California racing. Another press representative, Bob Green, editor of Cycle and Mrs. Green. Brummel of motorcycle racing, Don Holly, and a racing man's racing man on any dirt track. Every means of transportation was called into service in order to move the vast numbers of spectators to Catalina, and the migration proceeded like clockwork. The rollicking water taxis did a land office business and were popular with many possessing a staunch stomach and a hankering for more adventurous association with the not always calm Pacific. The group disembarking here apparently were good sailors, at least aside from a little difficulty in finding their land legs, they appear in reasonably good spirits. Private owned craft also steadily dropped anchor in Avalon's excellent harbor, along with the cruisers that had been exclusively charted by club groups. The invasion of Catalina was not confined to the water, however. Way up on top of the mountain, United Airlines planes were landing in one of the world's most remarkable runways on a double schedule. Construction of this airport was a Trojan task, involving the sharing of two great mountain peaks and the filling of their intervening valleys, making the airport known as the airport in the skies, with the longest unobstructed approaches and takeoff areas of any airport in the world. One end, the takeoff end, Honolulu is the only obstruction, the other end, San Diego. There's George Butler coming down the ramp, San Bernardino Triumph dealer. And here is another reason for the popularity of flying. Sorry boys, no tips or phone numbers permitted. Airline rules, you know. Aside from the Isle of Man races, probably no other motorcycle event on earth demands such extensive and careful coordination of transportation. The drums being unloaded were filled with gasoline supplied free to the racers by General Petroleum Corporation. If motorcycles could speak, they probably would have a bit, been a bit vehement in protesting their transportation to Catalina. Granted the privilege, there can be no doubt that their proud owners and tuners would have gladly relinquished the luxury of their berths to the little jewels and taken the barge themselves. However, thanks to skillful loading and a relatively calm sea, the immaculately prepared race mounts weathered the trip in surprisingly good shape. From the dock, the motorcycles were ridden to the city garages and impounded until a few hours before the race. What a magnificent picture with over a quarter of a million dollars represented in this sparkling array of racing motorcycles originating in no less than five nations. The affection and skilled work expended in their preparation for the race would greatly raise this estimated value. This seems an appropriate place to point out that all this expenditure of time and money is made in the love of the sport. There are no purses paid at Catalina, the winners receiving trophies in recognition of their victories. There's always room for one more on a sidecar outfit dock bound. Joe Schaefer, one of the 100 mile competitors, lends a hand in the preparation of the course sections. This scene serves as a reminder that the innumerable tasks associated with the preparation, promotion, and the running of Catalina races are performed without any form of remuneration. In fact, everyone works at Catalina. But wait, what have we here? Walt Fulton, gold breaking? Well, we'll excuse it, seeing as how he has his work cut out for him later. The gentleman who combs his hair with a towel is Frank Cooper, who has been doing prime mover work from the race's conception. Whether it's a turn of publicity on TV or raising blisters on a shovel handle, Saturday's race time draws near. The city garages are a beehive of activity as final adjustments are made on the small motors. We made it.
boys are taking it up the hill, we'd like to give you a few of the particulars on the course in Saturday's race. The length of this course is four miles per lap. The boys will run 10 laps around the race, around the course, giving them a good long run this afternoon. I'm going to have to correct the laps there. They're going to run a full 50 miles on this course of four miles around. We have three classes here in this race this afternoon. They include the 250 cc bikes, which started first there in that grand start that you saw here, the 200 cc's, and the 125 cc classes. The 125 is now going by. The 125, of course, is smaller, having only 18 entries. The 200 cc's have 20 entries, and the larger bikes, the 250s, with 27 entries. Coming off the hill at number 12 was Nick Nicholson. Number 17, mounted on a Triumph, George Aldwire. The bikes these boys are riding are rather rare items in the motorcycle industry today, being the pre-war jobs of the BSA in the case of Nicholson and in the case of Aldwire, the Triumph. Both of them stock factory 15 cubic inch job. We have a man down there in the corner, it looks like from here. He's getting up now, apparently no damage done. Here he comes. It's number 55, Benny McKell from San Francisco. He waves the crowd back. Apparently, he knows they're going to have to have plenty of room for the next trip. Number 12, Nicholson gets the white flag. One more lap to go. And here's the checkered flag. It's for the second place man, number 17, Alguire. Here's your winner, Nicholson, BSA. Alongside of him, Louis Thomas. Here's your second place man, George Alguire, being congratulated by the motorcycle crowd. There's his tuner, Larry, uh, Harry Foster. And here we are at the dance at Avalon Casino. Trophies for today's races are being presented now by the lovely Janice Kimbrough. Nick Nicholson received trophy for the first place in the 250 cc class. And now Johnny Quick, the winner of the 200 cc class. He's about to receive the trophy from the lovely Miss Kimbrough, and he gets better traction for the job he's about to undertake. The ever meandering, ever climbing mountain road you see unfolding in this remarkable view is the Grand National Circuit. Soon it will be a ribbon of dust as hundreds of spinning, sliding wheels search for traction on its treacherous pea gravel surface. Riding it at speed brings out the best or the worst in the riders. They find no respite. Upon reaching the 1,500-foot summit, the course across the ridge and back down. Completing the 10-mile circuit, it is even more treacherous and precarious, some sections being no more than a horse trail. It all adds up to one of the most sporting race courses in existence. Here we see the back down trail with its treacherous turns, its pea gravel turn, and it leads you down in the valley where in the background you see the beautiful mausoleum one of the more picturesque buildings located on Santa Catalina Island. Here it is, right in the foreground. It's Sunday morning, and this time the mechanics work feverishly over the big motors. Check and double check is the order of the hour. On the way to the starting line, time will be taken out for the beauty contest, but there'll be no cheesecake this time. A trophy will go to the winner of the best looking rider and motor. And here we have it, Russ Good, the proud winner. In the background is the famous Ed Kretz, looking on with a critical eye. Explosive tension prevails at the starting line as the riders seek their positions. Megaphones render a four-cycle rendition of the saber dance as the spectator's heart stump eight beats to the bar. When the beautiful Avalon chimes sound, the big race will be on its way.
race here today was started at a 30 second interval with five riders starting on each line, allowing the boys to get out of town and clear those streets at least in a small way before the next line started up behind them. As they go out of town on the paved road, in a very few moments they leave the pavement and onto that treacherous pea gravel slopes rising up to that 1500 foot summit and the wall of China here on Santa Catalina. In the background we see the boat waiting for these spectators to return to the mainland. Here we see one of the treacherous turns and there they go off of the pavement and onto the gravel road as it leads up the canyon on its way up to the summit. And here we see the treacherous turns where the ordinary bus must back up sometimes once and sometimes twice to make those sharp turns. The bikes are on their way up. Many of the boys are going to find it's a hard row to go. This is among, these are among the first group riders. They started out early. There's number 10, Don Holly, one of the big hot shoes in motorcycle racing on the track. A boy spins out on the turn and we don't get his number. Here he comes, it was number 13, Eugene Perkins, riding a BSA. You can see from the numbers that the positions are rapidly changing, even on this, the first lap. Panorama view taken here by a huge telescopic lens camera shows Russ Good, the winner of the beauty contest, coming around a turn. On he goes, taking those turns as though he were riding a, just an ordinary motorcycle instead of a beauty. As we come up to the summit, and the boys take that very sharp left-hand turn and ride along the Wall of China, here along the summit of Catalina Island, and known from its resemblance to that Wall of China in its natural construction. Many, many boys were pressed into service to do the flagging on these treacherous turns. Number eight here going around the turn, Del Kuhn. And Del Kuhn is having motorcycle trouble right on this corner, right in front of the cameraman, as though it were planned. Number five coming into the picture, Glenn Clinton. And he goes into that very sharp turn that takes him back down on one of those horse trails. Russ Good once again on that beautiful BSA. Bales of hay were hauled from the mainland to cushion the turns. Number 13, once again, Eugene Perkins. And looks like Russ Good has it going again. There goes 10, Holly. Number 11, Harry Loftus Jr. from San Diego, mounted on a new K model Harley. Number 16, Cleve McNeil from Burbank, mounted on a Triumph. There they go, out the road from in front of the mausoleum. And this road will take them directly into the golf course, back into downtown Avalon, where Frank Kennedy is getting more of the motors started on this 30-second delayed interval start. There goes 103, Walt Fulton, last year's winner. following another group of riders on up this treacherous uphill slope. I believe most of the riders enjoy the uphill grade more than they do that downhill slide because most of these boys are the hot shoe, ski foot type of rider. They like to slide them with the power on and you definitely can't turn the power on when you're going downhill. Let's try and catch some of these numbers. There's number 97, George Algar. You'll remember him yesterday. He won second place in the 250cc class. He rides a hard, motor hard. There's 103, Walt Fulton, who, as I mentioned before, was last year's winner, riding that Triumph Thunderbird. And here they come along that famous Wall of China. You notice the pole line construction. Catalina's very proud of their new radio station. That pole line there goes to the new radio station 
atop Catalina's Island and also the telephone transmitter. The road directly ahead goes to the airport in the skies, Catalina's Airport, and the Blue Pacific in the background. More riders in another section of the course. And he takes out a bale of hay, does a double loop in the air, no damage done, gets right up and starts out again. These boys can really take it. They slow down to a very, very slow pace as they make that sharp turn around that tree where you saw the boy unbutton that bale of hay. You can see it in the distance, scattered all over the landscape. These boys beat their motors unmercifully as they roar in gear on these long stretches, trying to make up time. Number 88, John Henry Carter of the Jackrabbits Club. Here they come off of the trail, right down on almost a, well, it would be hard to walk it on foot. Number 86 coming off of there, Eddie Vanderfleet from Pomona. Number 98, Vern Robinson, SoCal MC. Number 96, a little behind his time, William Zimmerman. As you see those large numbers mixed in with the smaller numbers, you know that those boys have gained tremendous ground because they started in five groups of five at 30 seconds behind. Down across the golf course, where on any other day, people are relaxing and enjoying a game of golf here on Catalina Island today, it's a roaring madhouse of terrific sliding motorcycles. The crowd is spread all over this island, on the golf course, up the back trail, downtown where they see the motors go roaring through the, right through the city streets. And here they jump a curb and go up where you saw the finish of yesterday's race, crossing more of the golf course. Number 114 is Sweet Boleyn, the Santa Barbara Harley-Davidson dealer. And here is number 22, stuck, and he gets passed right there on that corner. Coming off the hill, more of those boys and riding hard. Notice the handkerchiefs over their faces to help them breathe without getting the dust into their throats. Because in 100 miles, a man doesn't have very much time to stop and take a drink of water, no matter how thirsty he may become from eating the dust. A lot of hard riders here, and they're pitting their skills against some of the hardest riders in the entire United States. Entries from a good many different states have showed up here to ride on the Catalina Grand National, this second running of it. Motors coming down into town now as they leave the golf course area and the country club area and go back into town, down the main streets of Catalina. See the flagger at the far end, waving the boys down, trying to slow them down. But nothing, absolutely nothing, will slow these boys down in their mad quest for those beautiful trophies offered here today. There's number 10, Don Holly, taking those turns in straight up style with his feet on the boards. And here we look down the avenue right to this seaboard part of Avalon, where the boys cross right under the finish line. You can see hanging in the air the finished banner. Here's where Catalina's 100-mile Grand National will finish, the clock and the foreground used to check this race. Note the terrific crowd that is gathered here on Catalina Island. Well over 15,000 people, and here is the array of checkers. In the background, we see Max Bubeck, and there's Bill Graves from Pasadena. Each one of them having a certain group of numbers to check. As the boys turn, make the turn, there's number 21, Ray Tanner, riding a 74 overhead Harley. And somebody right in town takes out more bale hay. These motorcycles look like they really go for hay. I thought horses were the only thing that went for hay. Trying to keep them away from the shoulders and the curbing there. Holly again, he shows up right regular on this film. Number 24 you saw go by a few moments ago was the well-known Aub Labard. Winner three times of the famous Big Bear Run. He's riding in the 21 cubic inch class today. Up the hill, we see them coming again as they leave Avalon once more to pit their skills against that gravel road once more.
Here we find number 66 and number 68 battling it out. Vern Hancock and Wally Rammel. This boy getting off here on the corner. Several of the boys got off today, it's my understanding. Number 71, Bud Eakins. In an elapsed time calculation, Bud Eakins seems to be riding right up in there. He's passed a large number of the riders that were lower numbers than him when in the starting line. Number 70 spinning out, Kenny Bowen. Back on that sharp turn where the boys hit the wall of China, riding where they can look clear to Catalina. And there goes number 54, Nick Nicholson. Nick riding a BSA was the winner of yesterday's race. And from his elapsed time calculation seems to be right up in there on today's race. Notice Nick's riding as he rides into those turns. A very smooth ride all the way. Notice Alguire as he spins the corners there, number 97, battling it and fighting it. Manhandles that motorcycle in a terrific manner. He missed the turn. No time lost. Got back on it. This boy seems to be wondering just what to do next. But the best thing to do is get out of the road because there's more of them coming. Number 59 going by, Jimmy Phillips, holder of two national TT championships. Today, Jimmy is riding aerial. See the black spot in the road down there that the boys are so deliberately missing? That's part of the bale of hay you saw unbuttoned here a few moments ago. Action on the golf course were some of the high number boys that started late, almost 20 minutes behind the leaders. They'll be given credit for that time when the winners are figured up and the entire timing of the race. Makes a very, very complicated race to check because every man must be given credit for every second that he sat at the starting line after the leaders took off. Number 22 that you saw go by was Dick Halsey from San Diego. There's number 200, one of the boys that was very last to start in today's race. The motorcycles you see going by with no numbers, being ridden very leisurely, are marshals of the course. They kept continually riding around the course and keeping check in case anyone might possibly be injured. They were to carry the news. In case the course got too bad, they also carried the news. In the pits, we see action as the riders were refueled. On this 100 mile race, it was necessary to refuel most of the motorcycles at least once. Pit signals being given the riders, and there goes Bud Eakins. On the fifth lap, three seconds in the lead. Number 149, and I see even the ladies give a helping hand at this refueling. She doesn't seem to quite know what to do there. Number 149 getting refueled and pushed off with the help of the lady, Charlie Cripps from Long Beach. The hilltoppers seem to be doing yeoman service in these pits. A lot of boys there doing a lot of work and doing it in a very, very short few moments. Number 95 leaving the starting line, Bob Southern, also a hilltopper rider. Number eight going by, Del Kuhn, who had so much trouble in the first lap of this race. Seems to have it going good now and giving all of the boys a bad time. And what a nasty spill that boy took right there on the pavement. He'll have strawberries for sure. Bud Eakins once again. And Bud is having trouble. Right down through town they come. All of the flaggers questioning and they're slow down, but no one slows down 
when there's any possibility of making up just a few seconds on the man ahead of him. There comes Nick Nicholson, who seems to be right up in the top numbers in their calculation. And Bud Eakins, having just dropped out, it looks like Nicholson is in a good position to take this race today. But anything can happen before that checkered flag goes down. And now the smaller numbers are coming through. Another lap has been completed as we see these boys come through. The number allocation for this race here at Catalina today was made by lottery. The boys drew for a number. There goes number 21, Ray Tanner, another of the boys who seems to be right in on the elapsed time calculation. Ray Tanner is a hard rider, having won the Big Bear run once. The boys are getting tired, and it shows up on their corner sliding. Number 54, Nicholson, riding very smoothly, taking away beautifully from all the corners. And number 97, George Alguire, manhandling that triumph of his. Oh, they almost made it into the crash wall. Still the boys are giving those mounts not one moment of rest as they pour it on. Number 103, Fulton, another man who seems to be right in there on the calculation. Fulton, we expected to be right up among the numbers. He won last year's inaugural Catalina Grand National. Fulton rides a Triumph Thunderbird and a beautiful rider on this rough stuff. Tanner once again goes by the camera's lens. The boys jam up a little. And there you see one of the water reservoirs here on Catalina Island in the background, right off the wall of China. Familiar scene, we're back at the summit turnoff, where the boys leave the main road to the airport and take down the wall, run down the wall of China. No, they're not taking it down, but almost with the traction and the sliding that's going on here this afternoon. Thought he was going to pass him with that foot pedaling and it looks like he's staying right alongside. Everything to help out if you have to scoot the job. There's Fulton again as he takes another turn, passes another man very smoothly. Number 103 and number 35 running right together. You can see what a tremendous amount of ground that Fulton has gained in this race. Have a look at the surface there. And how would you like to try to ride your motorcycle or drive your car at the speed these boys are making on this terrific course? 10 mile lap, and in some cases taking just a few seconds over the 20 minute mark. Notice the three line marks, the familiar danger mark to anyone who rides these cross country, these road races, and these hare and hound chases. Here the boys go, down the trail that leads them into the golf course. There's that part of the bale of hay. And now it's the last lap, and we should be seeing the lead men coming off of that hill at almost any moment now. There's number 21, Ray Tanner, apparently one of the lead men in elapsed time here today. Of course, it'll be impossible to give you the exact lead before the official electric timing check has been made of today's race. We'll be looking for more of the top men as they come off of the hill. And there's number 54, Nick Nicholson, who definitely is right up in the one, two, or three spot from our point of vantage here and our calculation on the time elapsed. We can see that this man is definitely one of those lead men. Number 158, taking the turn there, taking it smoothly as they go down into town. Across the golf course comes some more of the very fast riders. And it's Nicholson, one of your lead men in today's race. More men as they come off. Number 10, Holly, another one of the boys who apparently is right up in the top number position there this afternoon. And now back to the starting line where we're going, the finish line, where we're going to be able to see the boys as they come across the finish line. 
And here comes the first man in his last lap. It's Ray Tanner, and he's coasting across a dead motor. He just made it. And here comes Nicholson, right in behind him. Very, very few moments behind Tanner. But a higher number should put him right in there. There goes Nicholson. Nothing wrong with that boy. Frank Kennedy give him the checkered flag as he came across the line. And Nick is going right on. His buddies tell him that it's all over. And now it's only to wait for the figuring of the time. There comes 103 Fulton and number 97 Alguire. Very few seconds, hundreds of seconds separating those two boys. And we know that they're right up in that top money, so to speak. The big trophies will go to the boys who finish early in today's race. There he is, the winner of today's Catalina Grand National, the second of these terrific races to be run, Nick Nicholson, BSA Mounted, receiving congratulations from his many friends and well-wishers. Last year's winner and today, second place man, number 103, Walt Fulton, Triumph Thunderbird Mounted. Walt seems to be very happy, even though it's the second place that he had to take today, that's consistent riding Walt. And here's your man in fourth place, number 21, Ray Tanner. A very happy boy. Yes, sir, Ray smokes that Barney Oldfield cigar that's famous, makes racers famous. Number 74, Al Copping, managed to cop fifth place in today's race. And there's your third place winner, number 97, George Alvar, another Triumph Thunderbird rider, being congratulated by the well-wishers all through the crowd. And here they are, the four top men in the Catalina Grand National. Nicholson, now wait a minute, we are missing Fulton. And Ray Tanner says, it's all over. I feel like I've really had a day's work behind me. Taking the boots and the leathers off, here is a director from Republic Pictures, Mr. and Mrs. Howard Lidecker. The echoes of racing motors are stilled in Santa Catalina's rugged mountains and the tired but happy race crowd are aboard the final boat. It has been a wonderful weekend, and the only regrets among the mainland bound passengers are that the stay on Catalina couldn't have been longer. In those regrets rings a toast to the island valley of Avalon, where falls not hail or rain or any snow, nor ever wind blows loudly, but it lies deep meadowed, happy, fair with orchard lawns, and bowery hollows crowned with summer sea. So until next Catalina Grand National, we join Johnson Motors in wishing you all good motorcycling.